In this section, I want to treat some of the common questions that you find in your trigonometry. And there is an example that is given, taken from a previous paper. It wants us to simplify. As you can see, the lesson is on trig. And in this lesson, we are supposed to simplify. And this is the expression given. As I said, this is from a previous paper. And the question is simplify. So how do we approach that? And this is your mathematics N4, by the way. So I'm just going to um, divide my page to say, um, just to put it, uh, to lay down a few concepts here because it is very important in trigonometry to have your foundations correct and definitely you need your uh, knowledge of N3. But now if I can bring a little bit of your background uh, the first thing that you need usually when you're solving such a question is your cast diagram. Remember, in your cast diagram, we are saying all students take, I usually say chemistry. All students take chemistry. Now, in that, uh, this is my first quadrant. This is my second quadrant, my third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. And then you start from there, this is zero, this is 90, this is 180, you have 270, and uh, after a complete revolution, it becomes 360. So now when you've done that, you, then that's where you come up with your reduction rules. And your reduction rules, in this case, in the first quadrant, you have 90 minus theta, and, and um, second quadrant that's where you have your 90 plus theta and also you have your 180 minus theta here and in your third quadrant you have 180 plus theta and in m4 we also introduce the 270 minus theta and then in your fourth quadrant you have got the 360 minus theta as the main common one and we introduce because it's after 270 it's 270 plus because you are moving this direction so it's after is 270 plus theta if you are going this direction it becomes 270 minus theta as you are having that so now when you are having this that is the first foundation now if i study this particular uh, question it talks about 10 minus theta which means we need to know the reduction rules of negative angles and if i can write them down for negative angles you must remember these are reduction rules you have sin minus theta now if you are saying minus theta it means you are opposing the direction which is now in clockwise now the one that i was writing remember it's from zero then it's 90 then it's uh, 180 you can see the direction that i'm moving but now if i am just to come, remove that so this is the direction that i'm moving in but now if i'm opposing the direction whereby i'm now moving in a clockwise because the normal way is an anti-clockwise direction now, if I'm moving in a clockwise direction, if this is my starting point, if I'm moving clockwise, this is the direction, then that's where you have your negative theta. So you, you are going to end up being in the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, you must remember what is happening with your fourth quadrant. Um, if I can actually write it back again here, you have got... Um, reduction rule of um, if I can say remember all students take chemistry by the way cos is the one that is positive it means sine is negative it means tan is negative I just want to simplify it like that without writing a lot of stuff and then 
That's what it means. Cos is the only one that is positive, but sine and tan is negative according to the cast diagram. So it means if I have got sine minus 90, it becomes minus sine 90. If I have got cos minus 90, it means because I'm in the fourth quadrant and cos is positive, it means this becomes cos 90. And then if I've got 10 minus actually not 90 in this case, I'm using the wrong angle here. I'm supposed to say cos sine and 10 minus theta. So if I say 10 minus theta, it will give me, as you can see, 10 is negative, it will be minus 10 theta. So that is uh, what you have as your reduction rules with angles that are negative. So now the first one, 10 minus theta here, it means we are going to have, if I'm to write it, it will be minus 10 theta, we've solved that. Now we have to deal with 270 minus theta. Now, if we're going to be doing the angles of 270 also i need to lay some foundation now these are similar to the um co-functions i just want to uh introduce some co-functions again now with the co-functions what you are having is you have got cos 90 minus theta if you remember this is sine theta and then we have got cos 90 plus theta now this is in the second quadrant according to my cast diagram remember 90 plus theta is in the second quadrant and cos is negative as you can see only sine is positive according to the cast diagram cos here is negative cos and negative 10 so if i go down again to say cos 90 plus because it is in, in the second quadrant and cos is negative it is negative sine theta so that is that part and if i use now my sign i will have the co-function sine 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta because it's co-function and sine 90 plus theta because it is sine is positive in the, in the in the second quadrant it becomes positive cos theta now with that being said let me now introduce the one for 270 because these are, are related so if i say then um in here cos 270 i'll start with minus theta as you can see on my diagram, remember it was in the third quadrant. So the question is, what is cos in the third quadrant? Cos is negative in the third quadrant, but it becomes negative sine theta. It's a co-function, remember? And I will have cos 270 plus theta. Now you have to ask yourself, 270 plus theta is in the fourth quadrant. Now, what is cos in the fourth quadrant? Cos is positive, so it will become sine theta. So that is that. And then the opposite is also true. In this case, it is true for, um, for sine. If we say sine 270 minus theta, so we have to ask ourselves, what is sine in the third quadrant? sine is negative so it becomes negative cos theta and we have sine 270 now it's plus theta and again we ask ourselves what is sine in the fourth quadrant and sine is negative so it becomes negative cos theta so these are reduction rules that you also need to be aware of which means if we go back to um, our part of sine 270 minus theta in this part that we're having you can see that sine 270 sine 270 minus theta is the one that is equivalent to minus cos theta 
so that is what is supposed to be written here so i will have in this instance which is multiplied by negative cos theta and then the next one is cosec and cosec remember is one over sine theta so that is what you're having on top all over now we have sine minus theta we talk about the negative angles and we say sine negative theta is that which is minus sine theta and then we've got cot 90 minus theta now cot 90 minus theta i can further write this as this is saying remember cot is um one over ten which is one over ten is same as cos in this case it will be cos cos 90 minus theta over sine 90 minus theta and then you have to multiply that by cos 180 minus theta which is in the second quadrant we have 180 minus theta and the cos is negative which is negative cos theta so remember i'm using my cast diagram you need to know your cast diagram because all the reduction rules are based from that and then when i've done that it is a matter of simplifying but we are going to further simplify and deal with that because this is similar to our core functions which we are going to use from there so now if i simplify what can be simplified now the negative cancels with the negative and then what i have uh, this was supposed to close the bracket there so the negative cancels with the negative and i have got um cos here cancelling with that cos and again i have this negative cancelling with that negative so this one was going with that if i can use my red pen so what i'm left with is my 10 here i've got 10 theta multiplied by 1 over sine theta divided by now we have sine theta still remaining and then times that is now the core function remember cos 90 minus theta which is that cos 90 minus theta is sine theta so i have here sine theta over and then we've got sine 90 minus theta which is that part there which is cos theta and then uh, we cancel that which means you can see that sine theta over cos theta here this is simple 10 theta so you can move on to say um, 10 theta times 1 over sine theta over sine theta times 10 theta because sine over cos you say it is 10 that further cancels that so that you are now having in this case it will become this is equal to 1 over sine theta over sine theta and this simplifies as 1 over sine theta divided by sine theta which is equal to 1 over sin theta times 1 over sin theta because this is sin theta over 1 remember so when you multiply you, you, you invert so which is 1 over sine squared theta which is equal to uh, if you simplify further it will be cosec squared theta so that is basically what this could have led to if ever you are simplifying that so that simplification then would have led to that now i hope this was of benefit to you but again let me make a, a, a big uh, emphasis to say whenever you are dealing with these 
the most important thing is for you to focus on your reduction rules and your cast dark ram is the main one because most of the things that you're dealing with here will be based on your cast dark ram. I hope this was benefit to you. This was Mathematics N4. Thank you.